Hey there, guys. What's going on? Um, come across an article I just wanted to speak about really quick. I, I watch Paul Throt read his stuff. He's a Windows guy, but I, I, most most of the time I, I think he's uh, a good technology source for pe Windows people, and he's good to keep up with because he's right a lot of times. Now, I'm not bashing on Paul Throt here, but I totally disagree with what he has been saying in his one of his latest blog posts. And I'm not going to read the whole blog post, but what I am going to do is scroll down here to what I think I is the main thing I disagree with. He talks about, well, you know what? Let me go ahead and read this for you guys so you know what's going on. The problem here is easily explained, he says. Um, now, this is kind of paraphrasing. I've skipped some of this. I've explained it before. Windows 7, as a slice in time, was so successful for Microsoft that the company is now copying the Windows 7 to market strategy across its whole board. That is, they're not communicating anything about a product until a feature set is written in stone. So we hear nothing about things like Windows Live, Windows Phone, Ken, whatever, until it's very close to release. Too close for the company to have to scale back its plans and be embarrassed by feature cuts. You know, as it was repeatedly with Windows Vista. It's trying to learn from its mistakes. But you see, he goes on to say that's the problem. Windows 7 was very much a particular product at a particular time. Windows 7 was so successful because Windows Vista was perceived so poorly. And the Windows 7 strategy worked simply because the previous Vista era strategy of early and often disclosures didn't work at all. Um. Now, this doesn't mean that Windows 7 strategy is the right strategy for every product or even every Windows version. In fact, unless the previous version of these Microsoft products were so badly executed as Vista, one might make the argument that the Windows 7 strategy doesn't make any sense at all. I've just said this, and I've said it repeatedly. So, this cone of silence stuff is cute. And yes, Microsoft will make public statements about how its enterprise customers expect predictability, whatever. They're not your biggest customer base anymore, Microsoft. And they're not exactly upgrading at a record pace anymore. So why are you bending over backwards for those guys? Consumers, however, are. How about giving them some sizzle with that steak? Well, now, I can't fault Microsoft for this. They've got to be good to those guys. They've got to be good to the... the enterprise so to speak okay they've always been good to the enterprise you know they they, they can't they don't want to change how they do with inter forsake the enterprise for the consumer they need to find a balance but that's just interjecting my opinion let me go on with his article i know that internally at microsoft many people do not agree with the direction the company is going and all you have to do it, it, to, to figure that out is read the tech press and heck the mainstream press to see who's getting all the press these days and we all know who's getting the press apple and it, it ain't you, Microsoft, and, and that is indeed the bad news. Now, here's where he comes into the, some of the stuff I disagree with. If you're looking to copy Apple's success, and you are, then at least do it right. It's not about the products at all. This is coming from a highly educated individual. It's not about the products at all. That's the first thing I have a problem with. What Apple does right is marketing. It's form over function, plain and simple. See, that's num number two I, I, I disagree with. It's not form over function, Paul. It's form follows function, okay? If you have something that's easy and got a nice form to it, more than likely the function will be smooth as well. Um, now, there are cases where that ain't true. Some people put design over functionality, but that is not the case in Apple's regard. You know it, and everybody knows it. Apple does not put form before function, okay? Um, with Apple, form follows function, or function follows form, rather, okay? How else could the world be so excited over an unnecessary, oversized iPod Touch? What are you talking about, Paul? How can the world be so excited over 50-inch TVs if I have a 25-inch in my TV? 
in my in my TV room. 50 inch TV does the same thing as my 25 inch TV, right? I can watch Blu-rays and HD movies on my 25 inch TV the same as I can a 50 inch big screen. So I guess a 50 inch big screen is just a worthless, useless product. Why the hell are people getting excited over big, huge screen TVs when they can get a 21 inch TV and watch the same HD movies on it? Hmm? Why, Paul? Why? You tell me. Why should I get a 27 inch iMac when I can get me a 21 inch iMac? The 27 inch iMac is just an oversized 21 inch iMac. That is a completely bogus and full of shit argument, and I'm calling you out on that. It's not an oversized iPod touch, because not only are some of the applications written specifically for the iPad, iTunes is completely different than what you find on your iPod touch, okay? And more power and more screen real estate, that is the epitome of upgrading in the technology world. When a new computer comes out, the new version usually has more power, has a bigger screen, maybe a few more features. But the bigger screen and the more power are like the main deals. I mean, that's all the iMacs have over the previous versions. When a new iMac comes out, they sometimes have a bigger display like the 27s did, and they have a more powerful chip in them. So the iPad is like having an iPod with a 10-inch screen with a processor that's twice as fast. And to say that's unnecessary is like saying an i7 is unnecessary if you have a Core 2 Duo. It's completely bogus. It's a complete bogus statement. And for you to be such a professional, I wouldn't expect something, some, something stupid like that to come out of your mouth. So, so, so let me start over. How else could the world be so excited over an unnecessary oversized iPod Touch? Because it's from Apple. That's how. Now see, now he's insinuating that just because something is from Apple that people's going to buy it. Even if Apple took a shit and they, they put it as the iTerd, people's going to go out and, and buy the iTerd in mass. And, and how stupid do you think we are, Paul? That's not true in the, at all. If a product isn't good, people will not buy it. You know, they might have marketed to the people that, okay, I'm going to go out and get this iPad because the, the commercials look good. That's the 300,000 people. It got the first 300,000 people with its marketing, okay? And you can say all you want to, well, those 300,000 people were just Apple fanboys. Bullshit, you know? Whether you want to admit it or not, some of those 300,000 people are normal people. If Apple has 300,000 people willing, fanboys willing to line up on the day of release, that's great. Microsoft has 80% market share. You mean to tell me when they release a product, they can't find 300,000 Microsoft fanboys to line up and buy it? Bullshit, Paul. Bullshit. If a product isn't good, they would have sold 300,000 of them, and they wouldn't have sold any more. But they keep selling. Why is that? Because everybody says they're great. Do people use them and, and think they're totally shit, but say they're great just because they're Apple products? Is that what you're telling me? All these reviews have that's reviewed this thing as being good or just saying it's good just because? they don't Even though it sucks, they're still going to say it's good? That is, that is, to be a professional blogger and author... That is a completely ridiculous and dumb statement. I don't understand why you would say something so stupid. Because it's from Apple? I mean, Apple has had failed products in the past. Look at the Cube. Steve Jobs was around for that. They put the marketing hype into that. The Apple, the Apple uh, machine was pushing that. It didn't go nowhere. The Newton was, was a flop. So don't come off of this shit just because Apple's selling it. No. Products sell themselves. Marketing helps get it started. But if the product isn't any good, it won't sell. Look at Vista. Marketing like crazy. When Look at the launch Vista had. But it sucks, so it didn't sell. So don't give me this bullshit. It sells just because it's Apple. Bullshit. That's, that's, a, that's a noob statement. That's a statement from somebody who is green and don't know nothing about the tech industry. Okay, and then it goes on to say, because it's from Apple, that's how, and the press markets it for them and makes people believe that this is somehow a big deal. It's a self-replicating, back-patting, uh, buddy system, plain and simple. So now what Paul is suggesting is that all these media companies, every single one of them, is a big, in a big buddy system with Apple, and they're not going to give Apple products a bad review. When I can go back over every single one of these publications that he mentioned and find something where somebody's saying something bad about an Apple product, every Apple pro this that's just denial. I hear PC fanboys saying this all the time. Oh, it's a big conspiracy. All these, all these media companies are in Apple's back pockets, and they're just patting Apple on the back and, and, and saying that it's a good product, even if it ain't good. 
it, we're, they're all just kissing Apple's ass, and nobody wants to kiss Microsoft's ass at all. Even if Microsoft put out a good product, we're not going to say anything good about them. Bullshit. Sounds like a bitter, bitter PC fanboy who's been really, really spiteful towards Apple and its success here lately. That's what it sounds like to me, because everything that I just read in that paragraph is complete and utter horseshit. A self-replicating, back-padding buddy system, plain and simple. USA Today, Wall Street Journal, Wired, Engadget, Gizmodo. I can go on, boing, boing. I can go on and on and on from mainstream media to small stream media who couldn't possibly be in Apple's pocket. All of them, I'm going to say 85% of these reviews are outstanding reviews. That's not coincidence. That's not a buddy system, Paul. That's not marketing. That's a good fucking product. And for you to try to come off and say anything but that is just ridiculous. You're given an excuse for every single thing. For everything you can think of of why the iPad is a success, except for the fact that people want it and it's a good product. You've given us every excuse in the world why the iPad is sold so good. You've given us the excuse it's Apple, it's marketing, it's a buddy system. Every single excuse in the world why the iPad is selling, except the one excuse that makes sense. It's a good product and people want it. So get off your high horse there, Windows high horse, and quit being so bitter and give credit where credit is due. People ain't stupid and people ain't just buying marketing hype. Okay? What Apple has done over the past 10 years can be attributed to more than just marketing hype. And for you to say anything other than that really just solidifies my opinions about you being a Microsoft fanboy as bad as I am an Apple fanboy. Now, I know you're not super biased. I've seen some great things by Paul Thorat, some great objective articles and views. But this one in particular article here is just sounds like complete Microsoft fanboy bitterness. Now there's one little thing I want to add here. I turned the video off in it before I got to it and just I wasn't thinking so I just quickly put my headphones on here. We're gonna let me read this last paragraph and let me say my opinion. And it goes on to finish and you're not part of the circle Microsoft talking about the buddy system. You know the media in being in Apple's back pocket. And it says you're not part of the buddy system circle Microsoft. How else can you explain the ginormous Windows 7 sales that get no attention and certainly no love from Wall Street. You sold over a hundred million licenses of this thing in record time and all anyone can talk about are lost iPhones and the iPad. I mean, give me a break. So let me explain this for your iced over mind, Paul. Windows 7 on Wall Street is not exciting. Microsoft isn't exciting anymore. They don't really have anything coming. They haven't got people excited. They're just not, their stock just isn't worth much. That's why Wall Street isn't talking about it. Apple's stock has went from $3 to $270 in 10 years. Okay, what's Microsoft done? This is why Wall Street's talking about it. And I want to put this in perspective. It says you've sold over 100 million licenses of Windows 7 and all anyone can talk about are lost iPhones and the iPad. Well, let's put that in perspective. The iPad... The iPad's only been sold here in the United States so far. Not even the 3G version has been released. And it sold 300,000. Like the first day or the first week. Okay? And that's just market marketing here without the 3G, without international marketing. Um, Windows 7 has been on sale everywhere. And the whole world is on Windows. 85% of the world is on Windows. 10% of the world is on Apple. And you're telling me 10% of the world that's using Apple computers, 500,000 people bought these things in the first week? Half. Half of a million in a week for a device from a company that only has 10% market share? And, you've, and Windows has sold 100 million licenses of Windows 7, and you wonder why people ain't impressed? Because there's 6 billion people in the world, and 80% of those people are on Windows. With that amount of user base, I think Windows 7 should have sold more than 100 million licenses. So, that's just my opinion. I think when you put it in perspective, when you look at how many people are on the Windows platform, 100 million licenses ain't relatively impressive. But considering the amount of people who are on the Apple platform, half a million iPads in a week, is impressive when it's only the Wi-Fi model in the United States. So, 
That's all I have to say there. OST and brothers.